Podcast, Episode 7. I'm Maddie. I'm Eliza. And up first, we're going to be taking on the school. This week, we're asking when people start setting up for the holidays. Roll the clip. Roll the clip. I'm Maddie. And I'm Eliza. And today, we're going to be taking on the school. This week, we're asking people when they start celebrating the holidays. When do you start celebrating the holidays? Follow us to find out. Alright, kid, when do you start setting up for the holidays? Like, what's holiday? Like, like Christmas? Like Christmas? Yeah. As soon as it hits, December. Like, first day of December? Yeah, December. Like Christmas tree? Yeah, I put my Christmas tree up in my room. I put a Christmas tree up every year. Okay, okay, that's good. And I put, bad. like, ornaments on it and everything. That's, yeah, we love it. We love yeah. it. Thank you for answering our question, You're welcome. Kid. Thank you for asking me a question. Yo, oh, anytime. So I'm setting up for the holidays. I put out all my stuff the weekend after Thanksgiving. Is there any particular reason or something you have to make feel? Because I feel like each holiday should be celebrated before the next one. Okay, that's valid. That's very valid. Thank you for answering your question. Welcome! I'm Maddie. And I'm Eliza. And thank you for watching Maddie and Eliza take out the school. Tune in next week. Miss Robin, what's yeah. your favorite Thanksgiving fit? So I can tell you, Thanksgiving is my favorite meal of all time. All time. All time. I love the stuffing. And Candy yams, cornbread casserole. That's my favorite. That's it. I love it. Find out what everyone else is up is on Chat It Up with Keon. Roll the clip. Hi, welcome back to Chat It Up with Keon. This is episode seven, and today we're going to be asking people their favorite Thanksgiving food. All right, today we're here with Nathan. And today we're going to be asking him his favorite Thanksgiving food. Uh, probably stuffing. That's that's a good pick. Why? Just, uh, it's really good, and like, there's so many different ways you can make it. Yeah. It's really good. Thank you. Danny. Your favorite Thanksgiving food is? Corn pudding. Don't even make that face. Southern cooking. <laughs> Don't play. My mom is so good at cooking and I love it. It's my favorite dish ever. And if you're hating, well then you've never had it. So, stop making that face. Cameraman, look at you. Thank you. That's why. Mr. Man, and your favorite Thanksgiving food is stuffing that is cooked inside the turkey. That's a drop never heard of that. Why? Because uh, you, know, you get all the juices from the turkey, everything you put on the turkey goes into the stuffing, and then it gets nice and crispy. What happens when they burn the turkey? Is the stuffing just going to the It could be. I don't know. I've never had it like that before. I've burned turkey before. Okay, thank you. We're here with Carmel. Your favorite thing to food is? Sweet potato bacon. It's a good pick. Why? Uh, because that shit is good. I don't know what it is. That stuff hits different. <laughs> like, it's always gonna be good, no matter what. Like, always. Like, and plus with the crumble on top. Mm. 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 Alright, we're here with Jimmy. Don't care. And today, what's your favorite thing to give him food? I'll say mac and cheese. Because the cheesiness and the creaminess of it. With some hot sauce is just so good. Cool. I'm just gonna walk right through the camera. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Eliza, who was the interview of the week? Johnny C. Seneca and Fatima. Roll the clip. What's up, y'all? It's Seneca, and I'm back again with the interview week with John. And today's interview is based off of social media. What is the most popular social media platform in your opinion? Right now, I think it's probably TikTok for sure. How much time do you spend on social media per day? Let's see, throughout the week, the, I spent uh, six hours on TikTok, four hours on Snapchat, and three hours on Instagram, one hour on Twitter, but mostly on YouTube, but yeah. What is the fastest growing social media platform in your opinion? Probably, probably TikTok. How probably often TikTok. do you post on social media? Um, a lot. <laughs> a, a lot. I just literally like impulsively Father was <laughs> shaking her head. I'm going shaking her head, nodding her head, yes. Like, anyone who's in this, okay, I have like a, hundreds of people in my private story on Snapchat, and they can all uh, testify that and say that. Do you think younger kids should be on social media? Probably not some. I mean, like, I think like having like Snapchat is like okay, because you could just like have your friends but like, let's get into like TikTok and like Twitter and all that and Instagram and all that. So that's where it gets like real, like. And if you, but if you are gonna have one, I think that they should have it like as a private account. 
and then once they're yeah. old enough, then put it public. Do you think social media has an impact on people? Yeah, for sure. Why? I don't know, because I think that, well, a lot of us, I'll say like a positive effect and a negative effect. Like, I think social media can positively affect people because, you know, you keep in touch with people, um, you see what's going on in other people's lives, you can show what's going on in your life. Um, and like I said, it's just about that, I guess, keeping in touch with somebody. Because, like, 40 years ago, like, our parents' generation, they didn't know what was going on in somebody's life. You know, when someone graduated from high school, if they were really good friends with them, they didn't have a way to necessarily constantly keep in contact and see what was going on. Nowadays, with social media, we do. So that's only a positive. But negative is, like, you know, once you look at those, at those likes and those shares and those comments and if it ain't good enough, then, you know, and, you know, especially when it comes to, like, you know, young girls looking at these models on Instagram and they're photoshopping and making their bodies look ridiculous and, yeah, so I think that it can have a positive and a negative effect. That's the end of our interview with John. <laughs> And I hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you next week for the vlog. Alonzo, what do we got on that? With the Geos and Preston and Play. Take us there. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the seventh episode of Wicca's Play by Play with me, Moppins, me, Blake, me, Preston, and me, Geo. So, starting off today, we're going to start off with the Texans versus the Bucks games. Uh, CJ Stroud had a record-breaking game this week. He threw for, what, 470, right? Mm, yeah, 470 yards, yeah. Yeah, he did good, and uh, he had a game-winning TD to end the game, yeah. too. To very the game the very close game, the whole game. 39-7 was the final score. With it, with 40-something si 40 seconds left, uh, CJ Stroud uh, made a game-winning drive. Scored a touchdown, they yeah. won the game. Yeah, uh, he broke Andrew Luck's old record of 433 yards held by a rookie. Yeah. Uh, and doing it in less passes, I think it was 20 less pass passes. Yeah, I think that's good to see how to see this route because he's got he had a lot of adversity this year so far. So it's good to see him have like a, a breakaway game to hopefully get them going more and more throughout the season. Next up, Josh Dobbs and the Vikings win over the Falcons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they won 31 to 28 with Josh Dobbs only coming in from a trade and only having a week to practice. Uh, yeah, like four about days. It. Yeah, four days. He didn't even know half of his teammates' names nor the plays. He didn't. He wasn't even the starter. Uh, the starter got injured mid-game, and he led them to a comeback. I think they were down like 21-something, 21-0. Yeah, yeah, and he came back and got the game-winning drive for them. So. We know the Falcons are prone to choking, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's good to see, like, with Josh Dobbs, he's played, like, on so many other teams. Yeah. I mean, just, like, three weeks ago, I think he was at the Browns. <clears throat> and now he's all, he, then he's just at Arizona. Now he's back at the Vikings, or not back, but he's at the Vikings now, and he's already doing work there. And it shows that the league, like, they all know that Josh Dobbs is a good backup. And he's definitely showing that. And he's like some aerospace engineer, I heard. Mm -hmm. Like, he went to college. He's yeah. really smart. Yeah. Smart dude. Yeah, uh, that shows why he knew what he did. Obviously, not having a long, a long time to learn the playbook, but obviously getting things done with his legs and his arm. Yeah, and it didn't even look like he was struggling at all with the plays. He came out there and looked like he'd been playing on the team for a few weeks, if not the beginning of the year. He looked like he was on the team, like he was meant to be there on that team. So with Kirk going out, and even their starter on that game going out, he came in to put them on his back and get the win. It's pretty good to see from Josh. Dobbs. With him, maybe they still have a chance to make a playoff run. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, our thoughts and prayers to Kirk Cousins, but is this a new gen, new era for the Vikings? I think they've gone five and zero for the past five weeks, so they definitely have a chance. Yeah, and with Justin Jefferson coming back next yeah. week. So yeah, so yeah have a chance. definitely look out for the Vikings, man. They could come up from nowhere. People are down on them, but you never know in football, man. So, um, anyway. Bringing it back to Cleveland, we got the Browns versus the Cardinals in a yes, dominating 27-0 win. Yes, sir. Uh, the Browns came out there. That defense is looking sharp, man. I mean, they have been all year, but they had seven sacks on that. He was a rookie that just came in, right? And tried to help their guys. started. He, he was a rookie, and it was his first game ever, and the Browns did not hold back on that kid. Yeah, well, obviously the Cardinals missing some people now because Josh Dobbs, who we just talked about, is on yeah. the Vikings now. So that's going to put a little bit of pressure on the rookie quarterback, oh, yeah. especially trying to carry that organization. Obviously, they don't have too many weapons ever since D-Hop left and everything like that. Yeah, And Kyler's coming back yeah, next week. Sure. Keeping it local, we got the Cavs up next, man. Moving into some basketball. Uh, they got a 3-4 and four record. I mean, we should be over 500, but it's the beginning of the year, and they got way more work to do, especially in the NBA. But... uh. They also, they also just got that win over the Warriors, which is, I mean, they've been almost a rival 
for how long now? And uh, they got the win 115 and 104, 106. So that's good to see from the Cavs. And definitely look out for the Cavs in the future. With uh, We got a lot of potential this year. So keep a look out for the Cavs and uh, good luck to them. All right, y'all. That's it for this week of Blue Devils Play by Play. Hope you all enjoy it and have an amazing Natalie, what segment are you most excited for? Sure, me to roll. Roll the clip. Eliza, have you ever had something embarrassing happen to you? Probably. Let's find out someone else's embarrassing story on Mariana's Story of the Week. Roll the clip. We're back with the Story of the Week. I'm Mariana, and I'm here with Xavier. And what grade are you in? Ninth. Please tell us your story. It's all I started on a Monday morning, <laughs> and I had to present this very long presentation about how candy affects kids after they eat it. And it was gonna be presented in front of 100 kids, and I was super nervous about it. My hands were shaking. I couldn't even say my words or anything. And when it was finally time for me to go down to the auditorium to present, I got my name called up, and I went on the stage shaking, my hands were all clammy, and my papers fell right in front of the stage. And I bent over to pick it up, and I just, boom, tripped, fell right into the, on the ground. <laughs> and all the kids just started laughing at me, and it was super embarrassing, and I still had to go back up there and present. Does that make you never want to... Like, present in front of people again? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you for sharing. Betty, what's your favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. And what's your favorite tradition? Going to eat at my grandma's. Obviously. Let's find out everybody else's on WCS TV. Take us there. Hey, Blue Devil Broadcast. Today, we're going to be interviewing people based on their favorite Thanksgiving memories. Roll the clip. I'm Anna, and I'm Layla. And what grade are you in? I'm in nine. And what's your favorite Thanksgiving memory? <laughs> my favorite Thanksgiving memory is when my cousins attacked me and tried to rip my hair out because that's what's like every Thanksgiving. Thank you. I'm Ariana, and I'm with Gianna. And what grade are you in? I'm in nine. And what's your favorite Thanksgiving memory? My favorite Thanksgiving memory was when I was little. I was so tired waiting for Thanksgiving dinner to be ready. I fell asleep on my dad. And that's my favorite Thanksgiving memory. I'm Jaden and I'm here with Avery and Xavier. What grade are you guys in? Nine. Nine. And what is your favorite Thanksgiving memory? My favorite memory is playing bingo with my family. And you? Probably eating dinner with my own family. I'm Ariana and I'm with Mrs. Carey. And what grade do you teach? I have freshmen, juniors, and seniors. And what's your favorite Thanksgiving memory? I think probably my favorite memory is just being able to be with all the cousins that I don't see all year. Um, I've got about 30 cousins and it's always nice for them to come together at my grandparents' house and spend some time together. And it only happens once a year. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Signing out on WCS News. Yo, Maddie, what if? What if what? What if with Amanda? Roll the clip. Take us there. Hey y'all, it's Amanda and you're about to go see people's what if answers. Let's go. And I'm here with Leah. And your what if is what if you could breathe underwater? 
I'd probably become like a scientist and be like better than everyone and discover new things. And discover like all the ocean we yeah, have. Yeah, like just discover new things. Go find those sunken mm -hmm. boats, hidden treasures. And I'm here with uh, Mark Cage. And today's question is: What if aliens got down your door? What would you do? Uh, I would probably lock all the doors. I would go hide over my bed and uh, we all know. Scanners from the alien spaceship, so. You don't mess with the aliens? I don't mess with the aliens. Aliens might mess with me, I don't mess with the aliens. Okay, thank you. And I'm here with? Alu. And today's what if is, what if you were the last person alive on Earth? What would you do? Um, I would go to the mall and take all the clothes because it's not stealing if there's nobody there. It's just not. You're just borrowing and not coming back. You're just, it's just not giving you back. I'm here with and your what if is what if you had a talking monkey? What would you do? Um, I probably have it learned different languages, so when people annoy me, I can tell the monkey to insult them in different languages. <laughs> That's a great way to use it. Thanks, Cam. What if that was the end of our episode? Because it is. Thank you all so much for watching. See you in the next episode. I'm Maddie. And I'm Eliza. Thanks for watching Little Broadcast Episode 7. Make sure you tune in next week for Episode 8. Thank you. Adios.